from It's Ryan Eggold <laughs> oh, and God. Freema Adaman on Plot Twist. <laughs> well, guys, welcome to the podcast. Amazing, amazing to have you on. I kind of wanted to start very quickly, Freema. Because of you, Baby Shark has been in my head the whole afternoon. <laughs> A nice little reference uh, <laughs> to your character, Dr. Helen Sharp. And my mind's like a pinball, and I went on YouTube earlier. It's got like nine billion views. What, Baby Shark? Yeah. I mean, like that's some, I don't know, some hypnosis audio crack going on there. <laughs> I don't know. That's crazy. Isn't it nine billion? That's unreal. Yeah. It was a nice little reference. I like the reference that you did. Thanks. Uh, so Thanks. I was feeling clever. <laughs> uh, guys, I, I don't normally do this, but I wanted to call out something from the top, uh, just with regards to New Amsterdam. The opening scene to series three, I mean, the show itself tells it like it is and it's very emotional, but it really pays tribute to healthcare staff on the, on the front line, uh, first responders, nurses, doctors, and what they went through. Um, and it's a timely reminder as we kind of get back to normality. Um, it, it, you must be quite proud in a way. Absolutely. We were honored to be part of that. I mean, you know, you can only do so much on a television show to, to reflect reality and the, and the, the real, of course. the real struggle, the real sacrifice that thousands and thousands of people made on a daily basis, sacrificing their sleep and their families, spending all their time in a hospital, trying to help someone trying to figure out this virus especially when it first hit and we didn't know much about it but yeah i think to reflect that for a moment and at least share an emotional connection with those guys and help reflect on that was a really cool really cool fun moment yeah well it was uh, particularly emotional uh, i always start with a few random questions i mean you guys have done a, a pretty extensive world tour promoting the show so you probably get a lot of the same questions asked you know, a fair bit. Uh, what? So I thought I'd try, you know, something. Off the wall. Uh, these aren't completely off the wall, but they're pretty cool. So, Ryan, you're not only starring in this, you've directed a few episodes recently. Congratulations. So I feel like, you know, a feast could be organized in your honor. Yeah. But what I want to know is what would be on the table? Oh, my goodness. What, what, what is this? Can I ask, what is this feast celebrating? What's the purpose of this feast? It can celebrate you and, you know, being a brilliant actor and the directing wow. on the latest series. Why not? Oh God! Oh God! If if Freema has to sit at a table and celebrate me, there's going to be a lot of wine, <laughs> a lot of wine on this table. Definitely wine. Definitely wine. Let's just go that route. Let's go wine, cheese. Although I'm trying to do no dairy anymore. Crackers, olives. Got to have the olives, and maybe just some little nibbles like that. Some grapes, old school Italian. Uh, Quite it'll... sophisticated. Yeah. 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 Very sophisticated. Yeah. Freema, as you, as you probably could tell, I was looking at your the old IG earlier. I saw some very impressive yoga, the, the sort of which, if, if I tried, something would pop. Um, <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm, I'm being deadly serious. Uh, no flexibility <laughs> whatsoever. But if uh, you could go to any yoga retreat anywhere in the world and you could take one person, where are you going? Who's going with you? I would do the yoga. Not that I know that there are any particularly good yoga. I mean, there's... It's going to be amazing, please God. But I don't know any personally yoga retreats in this place. But I would go there because the wine's so good. <laughs> <laughs> so I would go to I would go to South Africa nice. to do yoga, and I'd take Ryan. <laughs> yes, I like it. <laughs> I do it. <laughs> and then do the yoga and drink the wine. It'll be great. It's, it's going to be great. That's where we'll have the feast. <laughs> Then go on it's safari. Post yoga, you, gotta, you have to do the yoga first, and then you fill out the stomach. Yeah, this is sounding good. I kind of I want to go back to the beginning of uh, the first series of New Amsterdam, because when uh, Doctor Goodwin, Doctor Max Goodwin, your character Ryan comes in, he he challenges convention. He's got a, a different train of thought that gets others to reflect on theirs. Has there been someone in your life that's kind of had that kind of impact on you? Oh, someone in my life who's been kind of max in terms of making me yeah. feel more optimistic mm -hmm. about things. Certainly my dad, you know, my dad is someone that I um, have always looked up to and is um, very kind to other people and generous and very, um, you know, he believes the best in people. And that kind of sincere positivity, you know, not the sort of fake putting it on, but that sincere care for other people is amazing and something I've tried to take with me and in, 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 in my life. So my dad does not run around trying to solve climate change in a hospital, but, um, <laughs> but he's a very genuinely caring, altruistic 
guy. So I, I yeah, that's certainly um, inspiring to me. I like it. What about you, Freema? Oh, uh, it's okay, Freema. Well, I'm going to say an industry. Okay, Ryan. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm going to say, without being a name dropper and weird. No, do it. I'm going to say Lana Wachowski because. Wow. Legendary director of The Matrix, of course. My mind was blown just being in her company as a person and as a creative because she's just on so many vanguards and flying so many flags and such a lover and believer in people, of people and in people that she almost makes it seem simple that caring Mm. and fighting for others is like the natural thing that we should be doing. And, And also because she's non-judgmental and it comes from such a a place of benevolence that you feel in your own ignorance like if she's talking about a particular issue or world affair and you know i will sit around tables and often think to myself i don't know what what's being discussed here and i will just take a sip of wine so my mouth's full so i don't have to join in the conversation because i don't know what what to say but she was all she'd always like have these these dinner parties or these gatherings where everyone had room to speak but then you also felt bold enough when it was your when it came around to you to sort of say, I don't actually know anything about this. So then we, you know, education is really important as opposed to making somebody feel like they're wrong for having not done something before, not even knowing about it or not have read enough about it. I mean, if we all sit around a table and you've read five books and you've read five books, right? And I've read five books and we discuss by the end of it, we should have knowledge about 15 books if you're doing it right. If the the, the discussion is done in a non-judgmental and a loving 100%. and a, a nurturing way, you should come away having gained something. And she's incredibly erudite and articulate. And I always feel more intelligent when I leave her company. So, um, Yes, she's been a, a huge influence in my life, I would say. Oh, that's lovely. There are some people that just have that energy, don't they? And it just creates almost a ripple effect, you know, in terms of the others yeah. around them. Um, yeah. This is uh, the Plot Twist podcast. And, and, and much like New Amsterdam, life can throw some pretty unexpected moments your way. Before we talk about the show, has there been a standout plot twist moment in your life that you can think of, whether it's your career or even more broadly? Yeah, I suppose career-wise, I maybe had one of those because I'm not sure Jen or Ryan will know this, but you will, Tom, but I got down to like the last three in uh, for a role in EastEnders many moons ago. And I was like, this is it. This is the one. I, like, I was a huge fan of that show and it was like on 24-7 in our house. Like, just everyone, everyone, you know what it's like with that show. Yeah, yeah, of course. I was like, I have to, this is it. This is it. And I didn't get it. And I was thinking, I just was like, I'm kind of like, maybe that, I don't know, maybe that was it. That was my one moment. And then, without getting too woo-woo about the details, but um, I decided to, because I thought, oh, maybe I'll just quit because I blew it. And that was my moment. And now probably nothing's going to happen. And I think um, for reasons I won't go into right now, but I decided to carry on going. All right, someone told me to keep going and a year to the day, everything will um, will be revealed <laughs> as to why my life was supposed to go the way it was. And um, a year passed and nothing happened. And I was like, right, well, then I'm going to quit. And then the next day I got a call about getting Doctor Who. Oh, wow. So I'm glad I stuck it out for a year and a day. <laughs> you just hold on a little longer. <laughs> just always, always hold on a little longer than you think you need to. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Have you got a plot twist, Ryan? No, I, I can't top that. That's fantastic. I, I was not up for EastEnders. I asked and they said, <laughs> go back to America. And I was like, okay, seems rude. And I left and that was it. Well, I'm trying to think of a great moment, but that's 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 a good one. I'm going to lean on Freeman's story. I like it. I like it. That's a great one. Um, talking of the show then, it seems like these these medical dramas, they, they get an audience, don't they? They really do get some dedicated fans. And you've got the, is it the Damn Fam mm-hmm. that we refer to here? Yeah. I was just going to say, what I love about the show, and I referred to it earlier, it really tells it like it is, right from the off, and it has done throughout uh, the three series. Are there any particular uh, storylines that you've been particularly proud of? Because uh, it brings a lot of, not just healthcare issues, but a lot of social issues to light as well. Is there anything that kind of stands out? I referenced this episode many times, but um, this was uh, season one, episode five, Erica Green, 
wrote this episode and um, one of our favorite writers and Darnell Martin directed it, one of our favorite directors. And um, it was about one bullet that had hit two kids. And, um, you know, it had to do with um, gun violence and policing in America and um, race in America and all these things that were, that are, you know, very relevant, important to discuss. And it wasn't done in a heavy handed way. There was no hitting anyone over the head with a message or preaching or soapboxing. It was a human story where you connected to these to these characters, to these boys and to these people who were trying to save them and to the different angles of this one event. And um, I just thought it was a real cool coming together in the show where it really worked and it was about something that mattered. Mm. To actually, yeah, pick up on that point, I think... What I love about the show and so many episodes is the the furthering of the discussion of things that we're all talking about in society today. But as Ryan says, you know, you can bash people over the head with stuff and it will be alienating. Or you can just present something in another way that you may never have considered before. And I think, you know, you could live next door to a family that you have nothing in common with, you've never spoken to, not for any reason other than the fact that we all live the way we live. And it's like, you mind your business, they mind their business. And it's like, but if you, you know, if we can tell one aspect of that family story, be it race, a disability, whatever, and feed it into your television box, into your house, into your eyeballs, then um, it may just make you think a slightly different way and as Ryan said it's just a tv show we're not we're not curing cancer but we can further discussions which hopefully if we hit one person out there that goes oh I want to go and find out a little bit more about that or I hadn't thought about it that way or I would like to further this discussion in a way that doesn't make me feel intimidated or alienated then then we're winning yeah, I completely agree. And there was actually a, there's a synopsis for one of the episodes in series three, which describes the inequities and increased risk for women of colour during childbirth. And, and, and things like that, as you say, you don't always hear about that, particularly in, in the news, the, the way the world is today, um, seeing that day in, day out. And actually by seeing that, by virtue of watching the show, it really does, it brings it to life. And that's both important and quite unique, actually. Yeah. It does. I have to say one yeah. thing, which is that Erica, again wrote the episode you're referring to, Tom, about child labor and, and women of color. And in it was the discussion of this VBAC calculator, which is a tool to calculate risk in terms of delivery. And I didn't know much about it, me, Ryan, as a, as a person. And I was reading a little bit about it to understand it and, you know, saying that it was factoring in race in ways that it shouldn't. And these things where I was like, I just was unsure i didn't know what this calculator was and so i was trying to educate myself on it and then uh like a week later after we had filmed that episode this article came out in the times i think it was the new york times that was oh, wow. saying all, all these things that erica had in this episode that we had done previously and um it was just like you know wow like she's ahead of the curve and and here it is now coming out in sort of you know popular culture in the media uh something that she was already writing about on the show and it was just, yeah. um, it's really cool interesting moment that's really cool that's really cool do you, do you get close to the research and the detail you know like very with your character being head of oncology and do you, do you immerse yourself in that or do you kind of leave that to the you know the writers and the certainly in the early days yes we were like throwing ourselves into as much as we could to kind of authentically tell these stories and um and become these people and look and sound like we've been doing it for, <laughs> for I don't know, so, yeah. 18 years <laughs> or whatever it was supposed to be. Um, but the writer's room is so incredibly a- accomplished that so much is already there. They don't leave any stone unturned. And in fact, my sister said to me, she watched an episode and she went down a rabbit hole about chimeras. And she was like, I had to go and Google to see if that was true. I'd never heard of it before. And there's a whole world. of. And I was like, right. So, um, yeah, it's often things that they spark in us that make us as, as, as people who are also interested in these stories want to find out more about. But And I, I don't want to come across as sounding lazy, but if I 
get the script, I don't immediately think I'm going to have to do any backup to it. I just have to stand there and say the words and the rest will, will, will sing. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's it like with, with your family? Because you've got both your parents are doctors, your sister's a nurse. Do they ever like ask you questions about something they've seen? or? Uh, well, I'm, you know, being a TV doctor, I kind of tell them how to do their job. You know, I'm sort of explaining to them. <laughs> <laughs> like a doctor at work, okay? If you really stand, right. hold your head. And they're really learning a lot from me. Um, no, I, uh, you know, it's cool to have um, that firsthand experience of that stuff. I mean, well, I should say secondhand in the sense of vicariously through them. And, you know, particularly my sister who works these crazy hours and she's worked in the ER and she's worked in the transplant floor and she's worked in all these different parts of the hospital. So I've learned a little bit about each through her and visiting her a few times and just seeing the vibe of just hanging out between things. And then there's an emergency and then there's a lot of activity and then there's quiet and there's nothing to do from, you know, and it's like, you could be having a conversation about this and then suddenly you're trying to save someone's life. And it's just such an interesting place to work. It's, you know, and, and, and a place to work with such high stakes, you know. And you're, and you're actually filming at real hospitals, aren't you? This is the, the Bellevue in, in New York, you're actually. Well, we were. Has that been moved because of? Yeah, well, it was all changed to sound stages. Okay. Um, the, the art department, oh my God. It was like such a trip because we walked onto set and then you would take a left because that's the way you would go in the real hospital and then you just open it and there'd be a brick wall in front of you and you'd just be like <laughs> spinning out because you're like, wait a second. I, it's so real. They've replicated it, all of the sets that we ever use in hospitals, to within an inch of everything. They are incredible incredibly talented so i don't know ryan do you think we'll ever go back into hospitals i mean it's all just been we all have every we have everything there at the sound stages now it's a, it's a good question there was something interesting about shooting in a hospital we were shooting out of the way and sort of wings that they didn't use anymore and you know we would never want to, someone's coming yeah. through trying to save a life we're like hey we're filming here you know could you move your patient um <laughs> <laughs> we would all of course. try to <laughs> Steer clear and, and, and support them however we needed to and, were, and and try to be as gracious as possible. But um, there was a certain, I think, um, reality sometimes that it would land, at least because you would just be in it. You'd be right there at a real hospital where these things are happening, and it would just remind you that this scene that is make-believe that you're doing is based on this right next door that's really happening right now. So I think it would be nice at some point if we could pepper that back in. But, yeah, friends, I don't know because – I mean, you know, COVID changed the world, and I think if we do, it will be a long time um, before we do. And I, I mean, I don't know. I don't even know if hospitals will want crews there anymore. I mean, things have changed, so it's just hard, hard right. to say. You know, it's a it's a pretty extraordinary time to create such a series, really, given everything that's that's happened and and kind of then weaving it into the show itself. I just want to ask, as as actors, is it is it the dream gig that you get? You know, these these series where you get to evolve a character and take on you know so many different sort of situations and within your scenes i think it is if you work with an incredible team because you kind of you can just be so reassured that the, the quality and the level of the work is going to be high and then the pressures you put on yourself to deliver you know we don't do any of this work in a vacuum right mm. so i feel like it brings out the best work in i'll speak for myself in me when i'm able to work in an environment where I feel safe to experiment and in a safe environment to fail. <laughs> if I if I was going to that, you know, there's no judgment. Um, it, working with Ryan particularly, you know, and his is an opinion I I trust and I value so much. So it also yeah. emboldens me to, to to want to kind of experiment and to not feel like I'm going to be judged and to just actually ask a pit to work collaboratively together and. And with, with the rest of the cast and with the, the producers and the directors and just be able to to play, I think, and to risk being wrong or unclear on the quest of trying to find the best version of what it is you're trying to, to do. It, it feels like certain shows that you can really tell that the cast get on, as silly as that sounds. You, could, you just see it sometimes and you, you really do get the vibe with this. Um, something else I really love is, is the music. I mean, Ryan, you're, you're not a bad singer. I've, I've had a few... Bit of Jackie Wilson. You know. this. <laughs> it's a nice way to bring it into the show, though, actually. It's really uplifting. It's got a, some good Motown totally. stuff in there. I really like that. It's up my street. The music they put on the show is fantastic. They get really, really great songs, great artists. And 
it is a huge element of the show. And I was having dinner with Peter Horton the other day, and he told me a little secret, which I'm going to reveal now before the world, um, which is that his daughters will end up picking a lot of the music who are in college now. And really? That's the key. That's the secret. You need young people picking these songs. Twist. Gotta get down and get dead. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, they're the sweetest two girls ever. And, um, and yeah, so they're, they're uncredited music supervisors on our show. There you go. World exclusive and a plot twist all in one. I like it. Um, just just quickly before we close, what's it like when it opens up to a new audience? I mean, Freema, it must be, you know, for you for, to come to UK fans, that must be, you know, must be quite a, a nice moment, a special moment. Yeah, it really is, actually. We have such great fans on the show, but my my community of fans, my people who are, who have been so supportive throughout all the stuff I did in the UK. And then I just sort of vanished off and went and did this in America. And it just feels nice to, um, it's so rewarding when people are like, oh, we watched you in this 15 years ago and it's uh, it's great to see you doing something else. So, um, cause you know, as a Brit, we don't all necessarily always want to do that big mass exodus. It's just, as, a, as artists, you go where a lot of the work is, right? At the end of the day, Hollywood is, is Hollywood. And the opportunities that were happening there, as far as I could see, you know, back then, uh, were more. I'm, lo- I'm loving the, the change and the shift in the landscape that's happening domestically and, and globally, you know? So I feel like if we continue to tell everybody's stories truthfully and authentically and the, the people who are in the position to actually commission telling those stories then we should be able to stay and live wherever we are and be able to work as artists authentically as well completely agree well guys thank you so much for the chat really really enjoyed that and i've loved watching uh the series good luck with series three in the uk i I understand series four is on the way as well so that's uh another reason to celebrate yeah best of luck thanks with wine with wine (laughs) yes It's six o'clock over here, so I'm going to go and pour myself a glass. Oh, I'm coffee <laughs> over here. Amazing. Boring. That's what you say. <laughs> <laughs> that is a party I am here for. <laughs> uh, two things immediately to address. Go on. Oh, go Number on. one, why the hell... Was Baby Shark referenced in the interview? Fran, I didn't want to reference it after watching the video. And then there's an hour-long loop of it as well. It's got about 100 million views. But anyway, no, Helen Sharp, Dr. Helen Sharp, who is the character that Freema plays, she did a post on her Instagram saying Baby Sharp instead of Baby Shark. And I just thought, clever little reference. I'll pick it out. You know, find some common right. ground. Mm. Like Baby mm. Sharp, do, 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 do. That'll be in yeah. your head now for the rest Thank of the you. day. Thank you. Thank Second... You. I would say more importantly, but I think of equal importance, Tom, who abbreviates Instagram to IG out loud? Fran, everyone does. The old IG. Oh, I was just looking you up on IG. Just doing no, a bit of No, 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 no. You do this every week. Every Instagram week you stalking. Do this. No, 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 no. You do this every week. I was looking you up like some sort of prime stalker. I've got to do my research. Creepy. I've got to find out what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're going to move Tom? on from that. Overall, though... No, that was really, really fun interview. They were really positively upbeat. I was, I was loving their energy, and they had some great answers to the random questions. I thought you'd like that. Pull me up a seat to that feast for the cheese and wine, and <laughs> sign me up for a one-way ticket to the yoga retreat. You know, I'm there. They were all positive and, and definitely like the wine and the cheese, but also some really good answers. Like with Freema talking about her own plot twist, you know, almost getting the EastEnders part, then waiting a year, then suddenly getting that iconic role as Martha Jones and Doctor Who. Things like that are really interesting to, to learn about. Yeah, and that would have been a huge blow because a platform like EastEnders, you know, those soaps really give actors a chance to get onto people's screens. And it probably would have felt like a huge missed opportunity. But the bit I was more intrigued by is who told her it would be exactly a year until the next big thing came round? Like, was that a sidekick? Do I need to go and see them <laughs> so they can tell me what's going to happen in my life? I knew you'd go to the psychic route there. Um, <laughs> But we touched upon it before with these medical dramas about the storytelling and mm. something that obviously I mentioned at the beginning of the interview is like the opening scene um, where they sort of pay tribute to the frontline medical staff. And we both have friends who are in the NHS and are part of your know, medical staff themselves. And it really does highlight 
everything they went through over the last 18 months. There's a lot of love there, and I really like that. Yeah, and you talked about it in the interview, about how shows like this really bring big issues to life for people in a way that they may not have ordinarily encountered. Uh, And how Ryan was saying, you know, he gets through a script and he ends up sort of researching and educating himself. So really it's, you know, it is an entertaining series to watch, but it talks about some much bigger issues that really do need addressing. So, you know, I thought it was a, a really important topic to discuss with them. And also, it was just lovely how complimentary they were about the teams that they work yes. with. Yeah, we've had a few guests, haven't we, where certain shows you watch, you can just tell that the cast, the team behind it, everyone gets on really well. There's, there's no doubt. I mean, they convert in themselves. It's very much the case of New Amsterdam. And if you want to see more of New Amsterdam and really get into some of those chaotic storylines and some of those really interesting social stories, then the first two series are on now. The later series is streaming weekly. Get to it. Yeah, so go grab your cheese board, top up your wine glass, put your feet up and definitely make some space in your heart for a new medical drama because this one is coming for you. Uh, And we will see you next week. Bye for now.